Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about actions. We're going to talk about what they are, why they're useful, why we'd prefer to use them over other patterns like singletons, and I'll show you a few examples in-game of those working as well. So, first of all, what is an action? Well, an action is basically a delegate and an event. Now, you can declare those separately and create your own individual action, but for this instance, we're just going to use the built-in C-sharp action. And the reason I'm choosing to do that is because 9 times out of 10, that's all you need. It's less work on your end, and you end up with the same result. Now, if you do want an in-depth tutorial on delegates and events themselves, let me know in the comments below, and I'll sort that out for you. So actually, what is an action? Well, the action is basically just an event that, when it's triggered, anything that's listening to that event can react to it. So let's break it down. We'll have a action, which can be called from anywhere else in our project. So we can trigger that action from anywhere. Now, if we want something to happen whenever that event triggers elsewhere in our project, usually we'd need a reference to it. But in this case, we don't. So effectively, that decouples our code, meaning, for example, enemies don't need to know about the score system. The score system will be on its own, independently, over in the background. The enemies themselves will trigger an event and the score system will listen to that event. So effectively, we have the action, then we have listeners to that action that will react whenever that action is fired, and then we have over here, on its own, elements that are going to trigger that action. Now, this may sound a little bit confusing, but the way that I'm going to show you, I'm going to use a real in-game example, and I'm going to try and make it as simple and straightforward as possible, because in reality, it isn't actually that difficult, and it leads to a lot cleaner code, and makes your game a lot easier to maintain and build on. So just before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter, go check out his website, keep up to date with what he's up to. And I also want to just thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. So that's Brandon Zill, Steve UK, and actually my manager from work, Raf, has just started supporting the channel. So big shout out to him. I think I deserve a promotion. Anyway. Let's get into the examples. All right, so let's take a quick look at the project that I've got set up here. So we have a spawner object, which doesn't really have much to do with this. It's just so we can actually spawn in some enemies. You can see it just instantiates the enemy prefab at a set position every second or so. So we can close that off. We don't care about that. We also have a stats manager, which currently keeps track of how many kills we've got and puts that out on screen. Now, you've done something like this before, or I expect you have. It's just the script attached to a text object with a reference to it. And every time you call enemy killed, it's going to increment the kills and then update the text. Nothing spectacular. And we'll jump over to the enemy. And the way that I've set this up is a common way that I see people doing things like this. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as such. It works, but it's by no means the best way of doing it. So let's take a look at what I've got. We've got a reference to our stats manager inside of our enemy. That's a red flag straight away. We use find object of type to find the stats manager in the scene whenever we spawn in a new enemy. Then we just update the position of our enemy so we move along the screen. And then whenever we click on it, we use that reference to the stats manager and call enemy killed and then destroy the object. So as you can see, that's going to work. And if I play the game, you'll see our enemy spawn in, we click on them and we get the score updating. Perfect, it works. But now the problem arises if we want to add extra things when we kill an enemy. For example, I've got a score manager here as well. So if we pop back over to our enemy, if we want to add or update that score, we're going to need another reference. So that's going to need a private score manager. We're going to need to copy this, update the find statement, and then inside of our score manager we have update score, which takes in an integer. 
So that's going to need to be the score manager dot update score, and we'll pass in the variable that we've got up here for the amount of score when the enemy's killed. So we've added a lot of extra logic in here, and we've also added in an extra reference that we don't need, and we've also added in, every time a new enemy spawns, another find object of type. Now, with only two things, this is already getting very hard to maintain. So the aim of this tutorial is to decouple the stats manager and the score manager from our enemy. And by decouple, I mean we don't want our enemy to actually know about the score manager and the stats manager. They're just off in the distance doing their own thing, and they're going to listen for an event when the enemy's killed. So I'm just going to go down here, I'm going to create another C-sharp script. I'm going to call this Actions. You can call that whatever you like. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. And inside here, I'm just going to make a few changes. First of all, we don't need this to be a mono behavior. We're going to make this static so we can call it from elsewhere in our project. And we're going to need to be using the system namespace because the system namespace is where action is held. So let's start by creating an action for on enemy killed. So we'll make it public so we can access it outside of this class. Static so we don't need to create a reference of it. This is an action. And we're just going to call this on enemy killed. Simple as that. So let's start with our stats manager. So we still need everything in here. We still need to actually update the kill counter. We need to update the text and we need our references. But we want that to happen automatically when an enemy's killed. So we can tap into that action that we've just created and automatically trigger the enemy killed method when that on enemy killed action is triggered. And the way that we can do this is by subscribing to the event. So I'm going to create an on enable and also an on disable method. Now these are two reserved methods that are part of the mono behavior of Unity. And really simply what they do is onable is called whenever an object becomes active and on disable triggers whenever an object becomes inactive. So when the object becomes active, we want to subscribe to that event. So we're going to say actions dot on enemy killed. We're going to use the plus equals operator and add in our enemy killed method to it. And notice we don't add the parentheses at the end. If you do, it gives you an error because it's trying to pass a void into an action which is an illegal operation. Just something to bear in mind. So now we've subscribed to it. In a, on disable we want to unsubscribe and the reason we want to do that is if we have an active reference or an active subscription on a disabled object that object is still technically listening, but can't do anything about it, so it'll throw an error. So that's just something to remember. Always unsubscribe your events whenever you get rid of that object from the scene. So we can save that, and that is our kill counter up and running. So we pop back over into our enemy script. We can start changing things about. We can remove our stats manager reference. We don't need that, which means we can remove it from our start. And this time, instead of directly calling enemy killed on our stats manager, we can call actions dot on enemy killed. So now whenever we click on that object, our action is going to be called, it's going to send out the event, and anything that's listening to it is going to get triggered. And now in our instance, enemy killed inside the stats manager is listening right here. So we should be able to play this and everything will work as it did before. And it does. We can see we also have the score adding 20 every time. But we haven't taken that into consideration yet. Now we'll see how this comes in handy with items that need multiple references. So inside of our score manager, again, we're going to need all of this. But we're going to need to copy or retype uh, on enable and on disable. But this time we want to subscribe and unsubscribe. Uh, score. Now this time you'll see that we have a problem because update score needs to take in a value of a score to add and currently our action is just a void. It doesn't return or accept any parameters. So we need to change that and we could just pass in an integer using the angle brackets after action we'll pass in int 
But for scalability, I always like to pass in the reference to the actual enemy that's been killed itself. Now that may not be so prevalent in this example, but when you expand on this, the enemy is going to have more than just a score attached to it that you're going to be interested in. So instead of passing through all the different sorts of variables, we may as well just pass in the enemy reference as a whole. So we can actually pass in the enemy into the action itself. And we're going to need to update a few things here because currently uh, on enemy killed isn't being given that enemy parameter. So the way around this, because we're inside the enemy script, we can just pass in this. So that'll pass this reference to the enemy script into our action. Next, we'll need to amend our stats manager because now enemy killed doesn't actually match the method signature of our action which is requiring the enemy. So we'll just pass in enemy, call it enemy ref, and we're not actually using it in this, but the actual action requires this method to have this method signature. So we can just leave everything else as it is. Now if we pop over to our score manager, instead of our int, we're going to pass in again the enemy, call that enemy ref again, and instead of adding the score, we'll get that directly from the enemy reference. So that'll be enemy ref dot score when killed, which is stored inside our enemy script right here. And now that our score manager is actually subscribing to the on enemy killed action, we don't need any reference to that whatsoever. So we can remove the score manager update score. We can remove our start method completely. We can remove our reference to the score manager. And all we need to do is call actions dot on enemy killed. That'll fire off this action. Now we have two listeners in the scene. We have our stats manager, which is subscribed to it and our score manager. So both of these are going to trigger automatically and update our on screen value. And if we play the game, we'll be able to see that. Click on our enemies. Everything works exactly as it did before. Nice. And now you can see in our enemy script, we have no reference whatsoever to our stats manager or our score manager. So effectively, our enemy doesn't even know about it, which is the right way to do it. And um, one final thing that I just want to cover off here, you may get some odd errors usually the null reference exceptions. If you get that, the most common cause is the fact that your action doesn't have any active listeners. If you call an action with no listeners, it's going to cause an error because effectively it's going to be null. So inside of our enemy script where we're calling on enemy killed, if we didn't have our stats manager or our score manager in the scene, nothing is actually listening to this call. So we'll get a null reference exception. Now there's two ways of doing this, there's a longer way and a shorter way. The most common way is the longer way, and that's going to be if actions.onEnemyKilled is not equal to null, then we'll actually call it. But there's a simpler way, and as you may have noticed, this entire line has been greyed out. That's because we can actually simplify this. So if we get rid of that if statement, and instead what we want to do, we'll add a question mark after the end parentheses, which is going to do a null check for us. So basically the line that we've just removed is replaced entirely by the question mark. So if that comes back as it's not null, we want to invoke that method. So by doing that, we'll do dot invoke. And now the invoke is what needs to take in this. We can remove parentheses from the on enemy killed. So now this method is only ever going to trigger if there's something listening to it and it isn't null. So it's been quite a brief overview of actions, but I hope that you can actually see how useful these are. In future tutorials, I'm going to try and use these a little bit more often with actual real world examples so you can see just how flexible this kind of system is and how much easier it makes maintaining and scaling your code. So I hope you've learned something today. I hope you want to subscribe. If you do, please click that button below. Click the bell, all that standard YouTube stuff. You know what to do. And with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.